Okay, we are here with Mark Poole, a probably super famous artist. I mean, uh, I'm aware of him. I, I know that you're very big in the magic Super, community. but maybe not famous. <laughs> and uh, recently with Flesh and Blood, obviously the uh, spoiler for Outsiders Oh, here. yeah, yeah. So uh, how did that, I guess, uh, when, when players found that today, did they see the sign and come up and, uh, you know? Well, the, the, the cool thing was, was when um, the guys at Flesh, you know, Flesh and Blood Legend Studios said, hey, you know, you're going to be in Indianapolis. Uh, what if we uh, let you preview a, you know, one of the upcoming cards? I was like, okay. They said, but you can't say anything on anything. You can't post it. Uh, keep it to yourself. So make your sign. You can make your prints. Here's some artist proofs. So uh, when you show up, just set up and see what happens. And it was an Easter egg, basically. It was a great Easter egg. So it was nice to have uh, to be a part of somewhere the fans could come in, find this Easter egg, all of a sudden, then be the first to. Uh, to spoil it. So how much. long did that Easter egg get hidden before the first person possibly noticed uh, it? It was probably 15 minutes. <laughs> As they walked in, they saw the sign and then bam. I was like, okay, then then the, 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 they just started descending in and talking about it, wanting to see the card, wanting to see the art, wanting to see what it did and everything. So it was really, really fun. So if I may ask then for this particular piece of artwork here, mm -hmm. um, it, it, was there a direction or an idea or how does it come to be this piece of artwork is chosen for that or, yeah, or well, artistic creativity? A lot wise? of them kind of start the same. A lot of them are like, all right, we've got this card coming up, but this one is a different one, of course. So this will be a you know, first of its kind. Basically, so like, here's, we want this. It's got to have a, you know, we want a fall of some kind of magical setting, but we want a, the quiver to be an equipment. So, gotcha. you know, in Flesh and Blood, the equipment cards sit pretty much, whether it's a, you know, a staff or something, they occupy the, kind of the same space. So this one was different. So they came up, they gave me the general idea for the space. So I uh, drew like six to eight pencil sketches, started working on the quiver to get the feel. And some were very like ornate, very elfish kind of vibe. And I went down this path of making something more organic, kind of rootsy, earthy kind of vibe. And they picked that one and another one and said, expand these two and pick the one you think was, you know, what you're feeling. I really like this one because it's a little different. I haven't seen anything, because you want to make something that's different and new. So uh, yeah, I went beautiful. with this like with the roots and the, I don't know, I just went with that route basically. So, and then with the fall colors, I don't know, it kind of came together at that point, so. And obviously with, with being an uh, MTG artist as well, there's, you know, plenty of famous cards that you've had there, and they became iconic over the years. So right. do you foresee cards like this getting to that same you know, stature at some point? Uh, it's, you, you can, you know, those kind of things, it's hard to predict. You know, you would, you know, uh, not in a, a, a wacky way, but it would be great to see it have an iconic. But we, yeah, I don't know, that was like with magic. <laughs> uh, who knew? You know, or what cards became iconic? Like if you look at birds or something, that was, was supposed to have been an island, so it was more of like a really simple thing. Uh, now we're here, it's a very iconic image in the gaming industry, so I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard to say, but you know, uh, you don't know how things are perceived in, in today's visually overstimulated world and stuff. So. Gotcha. Now, are there other games you're allowed to speak of that you are creating art for at this I've point? done some stuff for Cryptic. Oh, okay, uh, that's a newer one. That's one yeah, of the Kickstarter games. Yeah, I, I, I did a piece for that. Uh, great guys, nice guys. Um, Tanner, I believe, yeah, right? Tanner, yeah, Tanner, okay. yeah, yep. great, great people. And that's about it, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I stay pretty busy with Wizards and now Flesh and Blood, and uh, they kind of, you know, eat up my time a good bit. So. so hopefully we'll be seeing some more art from you in the future, it yeah, looks like. Yeah, so that hey, be you know, awesome, so. yeah, me too. It's all, I, I, it's still a lot of fun. You know, I love getting the emails, hey, you ready for the next push or the next assignment? It's still cool to see those emails come in, so. So if you were to, I guess, pick your favorite piece of art that you have ever done, is that is that a possibility? Or? No, it's not, and you get asked all the time, and I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's a tough one. Like, that's, name your me or your favorite element. I don't know. Exactly. I mean, you know, I don't know. It's I have a lot of cards I like and stuff, um, but uh, with 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 the flesh and blood, I mean, the Tome of Harvest is still it was a fun piece. But I, even like Waning Moon, I really really enjoyed it. It was just a simple, I you know, uh, uh, an item, but I, I I enjoyed doing it. So, and every set comes out. Um, but like with the new the quiver, it's a nice. It just feels great. It feels. I don't know, it feels warm oh, and welcoming. I, I like it a lot, so. All right, well, we'll wrap this up, yep. and I appreciate your time today, so yeah, thank you man. for well, uh, chatting. And see you at another event, I'm sure. Absolutely, so. Yeah. Pleasure, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. You're